As power supply growth has collapsed in the month of August, what could be the factors? How are the numbers looking? Prashant is here with some analysis. Prashant, this is the first negative read that we've seen in the last three years. Uh, it doesn't look good, uh, does it? I mean, if you look at the August numbers uh, for power supply growth, we're in negative territory now, minus 1.3%. These are all year-on-year -year comparison numbers. And look at what we have, minus 1.3%. In last month, it was 6.7%. In the month of June, it was 8.5%. In, in May, it was 7.6%, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's the, as, uh, as the title says, the first negative print in nearly three years now. Uh, so that's uh, I mean the first place. Let's move on. Compare this number to essentially uh, uh, what uh, uh, what uh, uh, financial year 20 till now looks like. I mean, uh, if you include the August numbers, F520 growth so far stands at 5.5 percent. Before August, taking just April to July, that was 7.3 percent. So 7.3 has now become 5.5 thanks to the August print, which is negative. F519 growth was. 5.3%, so we're actually pretty close now to the F519 numbers. Uh, so this is power supply growth. I mean, you know, the, you can look at power supply, you can look at power demand, they'd be, uh, they'd be pretty closely matched. I mean, power can't be stored. What is, uh, you know, uh, what, is, what can be consumed is what is supplied. Uh, at six-year uh, thermal, thermal generation, thermal power generation, which is essentially still the bulk of uh, all uh, power, uh, is at six-year lows. Right. So uh, in the month of August, that is negative minus negative 3.5 percent. So in the month in from April to July, that is F5 20 till July, that growth was 5.1 percent. This is in large part uh, thanks to state uh, and central utilities where uh, uh, you know generation has actually collapsed. I'm talking about companies like NPPC, etc. This also means that we've got the lowest thermal PLF on record, uh, uh, plant load factors on record. It's down 537 uh, ba basis points on a year-on-year -year basis. This is the lowest on record, right? We don't have record all the way. Uh, we, I think uh, the, uh, the uh, earliest number is sometime in 2011, uh, but this is the earliest since then. The question is, is all of this an aberration? I mean, should we really be panicking? Should we really say, well, okay, this is all because of, uh, you know, the slowdown that we are in? I think it's too early. I don't think one should extrapolate one month's number and say that this is a direct consequence of the slowdown we are seeing. A couple of things. August this year saw a huge amount of rainfall all across the country, uh, it, which was not exactly the case last year. So, I mean, you know, if rain stopped in July and did not extend into August, uh, demand, for, uh, demand for power from households and industries, etc., and mainly households, would increase, right? I mean, as it becomes hotter. So that is point number one. Seasonal rainfall could be one big reason. There were more holidays from an earlier festive season. I mean, there is also, of course, the doubt that maybe this is also because of the industrial slowdown. We've seen, you know, auto company after auto company announcing limited shutdown uh, periods, etc. And industrial demand is a large contributor to overall power demand. So it's possible that that also has a factor, uh, has a role to play. But I think it would be wrong to take this one month of data and say, and, and point to it and say, well, this is because of the slowdown and, and nothing else. We'll, have to, we'll, ha we'll need data for a few more months before we can uh, say anything conclusively. I come to the renewable generation growth, uh, and uh, look at this. I mean, August, actually, August, we've seen uh, renewable power generation down 20%. In the month of July, it was down 4.4%. I mean, wind essentially is the bulk of renewable power generation. Almost, I think, 60% of renewable power generated is wind, 30% is solar. Uh, uh, wind has done uh, badly. It's down 27%. Solar actually has done well. It continues to do well. It has grown about 17 odd percent or so. Uh, and then uh, renewable generation growth itself. I mean, where do we stack for the year so far? F520, including August, we are at about we're growing at 1.4%, and that compares to F519 growth, which was 24.5%. And that is essentially thanks to wind. As I said, that's the bulk of renewable contribution, which actually slowed down very very sharply. It's in the negative. So. I mean, that's the power uh, uh, sort of sector dynamics, as uh, we know, in the month of August. As I said, can't take one month's data and extrapolate it. We'll need to watch this carefully, uh, given the situation that we are in. Back to you.
Thanks, Prashad. I just want to add three points to what you said. One, August, of course, was minus 1.3, but were the prior months where the uh, growth averaged about 7%, were they better on account of the elections? Did that boost uh, the demand? And secondly, he listed a couple of factors why the, you know, this month's number could be an aberration and was weak on account of industrial output, rainfall, etc. Could it also be on account of the fact that now it's mandated that discoms have to maintain a letter of credit as a payment security to uh, power plants? because this was effective 1st of August. And also one final question, which is a thought we'll ponder with Sabyasachi Mukherjee will be joining in. With plant load factors at record lows, will it affect, how will it affect the debt servicing ability of the sector? Let's pose all these questions to Sabyasachi Majumdar, the Senior Vice President and Group Head of ICRA Ratings. Uh, Sabyasachi, would you extrapolate uh, the weak number in the month of August going ahead? Uh, not really. If you look at uh, this whole year, 1920, April to July was reasonably good. We, uh, e even if you add August, at the end of August, the cumulative growth for the period April to August is about 4.8, 4.9%. Uh, this is, of course, excluding renewables. So if you're looking at the previous months, let's say from April to July, the growth would be somewhere around 55 to 6%. It's only in August uh, that there has been a negative growth. Now, the point is it's uh, very difficult to extrapolate from just one month's experience uh, because as you'd be aware that power uh, demand as well as generation is a fairly seasonable, uh, seasonal uh, factor as well. Uh, typically, if you remember, recall, this August has been an unusually rainy one and the rains have been across uh, the entire country. Now, this has two impacts. The biggest impact, of course, is in the agricultural consumption. Uh, because the Kharif season, of course, is the main uh, cultivation uh, season in the uh, cultivation season in the country, and when the rains are very good, the demand for uh, lift irrigation, which is basically lifting uh, water through tubes, etc., is much lower from agriculture. So, if uh, uh, rains are taking place and there's a natural uh, flooding of the fields, uh, there's very little demand from the agriculture segment. So, that is one very big impact. Uh, this kind of a good monsoon creates on uh, agri-demand, and agri-demand, in spite of the fact that it's not really large, still is somewhere uh, in the double digits. Mm. Second factor, of course, is that uptake from the domestic seasons, uh, sector is also impacted because a fair amount of the total domestic demand goes into cooling applications like uh, fans, uh, coolers, air conditioners, etc. So if the monsoons are good, the weather is a bit more... Uh, uh, balmy and uh, cooling requirements are less from uh, domestic uh, users. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, industrial con consumption may also have contributed uh, to the muted uh, demand in August. Uh, I mean, we we were reading about several industries having yeah. high inventory, so but possibly they may have cut back on production during the month of August. Uh, but I would think that it will be very difficult to uh, you know extrapolate from just one month's experience. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Sabitaji, do we have data which tells us how much of the power uh, which is produced is consumed by uh, industries and how much by households? What is the breakup? No, not really. This is available with a fair amount of lag. I mean, the real-time data on what... Uh, no, okay. On a, on a trend basis, I mean, historically, what is the split like? Uh, split would be like, uh, agree would be somewhere around 15 to 20 percent. Hmm. Uh, domestic would be uh, another about maybe 20 odd percent. Domestic, you mean uh, 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 households? Yeah, households, yes. And uh, 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 commercial and then commercial industry, then railways, these are some of the other major. So that's uh, the rest uh, of the 65, almost 65 percent? Yeah, no, it'll be a bit more. I mean, basically, agri and domestic would be close to maybe anywhere between 40 to 50 percent. Uh -huh. The rest would be other segments like railways. Uh, industrial and consumer, and actually it must be kept in mind that the consumer mix is a very important factor for the financial health of the mm. distribution sector because mm. domestic consumer, particularly the lower end, I mean obviously mm. guys who are using more than 400 units, mm. uh, they pay a fairly high tariff, but uh, domestic uh, households which are using less than 400 units per month mm. and the agri uh, consumers are typically a drain on uh, the overall discount financial health. Mm. So, Visachi, isn't it a possibility that the April to July power numbers, generation numbers look good on account of elections and therefore we can't extrapolate that kind of growth going ahead? 
Uh, see, that kind of extra demand uh, could possibly explain April and May uh, of take. But we must also remember that over the last couple of years, there has been a lot of investment uh, in the uh, this uh, rural electrification. I mean, uh, uh, villages were already electrified, but a lot of work has been done on, uh, you know, uh, bringing the power to... Uh, household, rural households as well. I mean, earlier they were not getting adequate hours of supply. And our experience, particularly, you know, our, uh, you know, interaction with uh, utilities in uh, particularly some of the northern states does indicate that overall hours of supply have improved. I mean, obviously elections may, might have been a contributing factor, but over the last two to three years, two years or so, I think there has been a, a fair increase in rural offtake as well because of uh, efforts being made for uh, last mile connectivity in villages. Okay, uh, Safizaji, thanks very much. Uh, great speaking with you. Appreciate you joining us uh, with your take on the August uh, power numbers. I mean, uh, so, you know, the view is very, very clear as I also highlight